Hello and welcome to another cookie tape video. So today I'm going to be teaching you on how to make your very own bin system. This will allow users who have their inventories full of junk to empty it and to keep their inventories clean. So before I teach you on how to make this system, I'm just going to show you how it works. Welcome to Roblox Studio, you can see my inventory is full of junk and now you can see if we walk up to the bin and then we click this yes, you'll see that all our items are deleted and now we can go back and we can keep on reusing this system to our liking. So if you'd like to get the source code or the model in this video that you can see right here, you can go to the download link in the description down below where you can get the scripts and you can get the download to this model. To start off we're going to go to studio. First of all we're going to make a new base plate by clicking on the base plate button. Once we've loaded into the base plate we are going to organize our explorer. So to start off, we're going to organize our explorer. You guys know that I like to keep my explorer clean, so I'm going to make a few folders. You don't have to do this, but I just want to, so I'm going to make a new folder inside of workspace, and I'm going to call it bins. Then I'm going to make a new folder inside of replicated storage, and I'm going to call this bin system. Then I'm going to make another folder inside of service with service and I'm going to call this bin system 2 and then finally we're going to go over to starter GUI I'm going to also name another folder called bin system now since I want to use the model in the video I'm going to go to the forms in the link down below I'm going to download the model and I'm just going to paste mine inside of the folder and you can see here it pops up and you can see it has a little logo to show that it's a bin. Now what we're going to do is we're going to insert a remote event inside of our bin system folder. This will allow us to communicate with the server to the client. So make sure you insert a remote event, not a bindable event, just to make sure it's a remote event. Click on it and I'm going to call this, just for example, delete items request. You can name it what you want, but I'm just going to go with this. Next form, we're going to put a script inside of our bin system. This will be our server script, and we're going to call this delete item script. And now finally, inside of our bin system, we're going to make a local script, and we're just going to call this main bin manager that we've done that, we're going to start off by configuring the scripts inside of our service web service. So we want it that when this remote event is fired, we delete the items inside of the player's inventory. To start off, we're going to define our local delete items remote event. So to do that, we're going to say local delete items request, and then we can say game dot replicate storage, now inside of replicate storage bin system dot delete items request now we've defined our delete items request we're going to drop a few lines down we're going to say delete items dot on server event so when the delete items request is fired we're going to connect function we're going to put in player inside of our parameters and we're going to press enter and it'll automatically insert an end pass and we're going to make a for loop and we're going to say for I V in I pairs player dot pack back get descendants do. Now this will loop through every tool inside of the player backpack. If you don't know what the player backpack is, it's basically a place where all the tools that the player owns is stored. Now what we're going to do is we're going to loop through all the tools inside the backpack. I'm going to say V destroy. And that will delete the tools, therefore the player won't be able to use them anymore. And by saying player.backpack get descendants, we're getting the descendants. Let's give you an example here. Let's say we have a folder and we put 
lots of parts inside. When we say folder, get descendants, these are all the descendants. All of these parts are the descendants. So I'm just going to delete that. And now we're going to move on to the client script. So we're going to double click to open and we're going to close this. And then we're going to start working with this. So inside of the bin model, there's a little detector. You can see it's called detector. It's inside of here. And this will basically detect when a player touches the bin or goes in the proximity of the bin. So we're going to define the bin detector by saying local bin detector equal game dot workspace dot bins dot bin dot detector and that is the bin detector part and then we're going to say local starter gui so we're going to get the starter gui here and we're going to say game get service starter gui and then we're going to say local debounce equals false and debounce basically stops our functions from getting spammed so it will make sure that our script doesn't get spammed and then we're going to say local delete items event or remote event we can say and we're going to say game dot replicated storage dot bin system wait for child and then we're going to put delete items request which is the remote event we defined over here now we're going to drop a few lines and then we're going to say local bindable equals instance dot new bindable function. This bindable function will be able to be invoked by this script at any point. When this bindable function is invoked, we want to fire the delete items remote event. So we're going to make a function and we're going to say bindable dot on invoke so when this bindable function gets invoked we're going to say response and then we're going to say delete items delete items remote event and we're going to say bar server now you see we have a bit of a red line here that's because we didn't put a capital like we defined on this so let me just fix that there we go and now we're going to drop a few lines so, in our previous videos, we've used this function to make our notifications. We're going to use a similar function, but this time we're going to add, or we're going to define a few more things. So we're going to say local function, notification, and we're making a function here. And then, since we define started UI up here, we're going to say started UI, dot set core, send notification, here and we're going to create a table then we'll press enter like this and now we can give it a title i'm going to personally go with a nut you can set it to whatever you want to but i'm just going to go with a lot you can set a text which is the description basically and i'm going to say would you like to clear your inventory and then now we're going to create a button and this button can be clicked by the user. So we're going to say button1 equal yes. You can set this to agree or you can set it to clear inventory. I'm just going to go with yes since it's a simple button. And then we're going to say, make sure that you're leaving a comma after each of these. We're going to say callback equal and then now we're going to put bindable and then that will fire this function which will in turn fire our remote event now we're going to drop a line and now here we're going to detect when the bin detector has been touched so we're going to say bin detector dot touched connect function and then here we're going to put part so here we're saying what touched the part? So this will basically say, say for example, cookie dev x touched the part, we're just gonna say print part and it print cookie dev x. 
Now we're gonna say, since we were gonna use our debounce here to stop things from getting spammed, we're gonna say if debounce equals false, then debounce equals true. This means that this function can't be fired again until we set debounce to false. And then we're gonna say local part parent equal part dot parent. So we're just getting the parent of the part we defined up here. And now we're gonna say local humanoid. So humanoids can only be found inside of Roblox players. Equal part parent find first child, which is a humanoid. So it's looking for the first child, which is a humanoid. And then we're gonna say, if there is a humanoid, then by the notification function, which we defined up here, and then we're just gonna wait eight, and then we'll turn our debounce off again by, by saying debounce equals false. Now, let's check the system. So we're just gonna click play. Keep in mind, let's make sure our bins are anchored so they don't go everywhere. And then let's just click the play button and see if it works. Here we are inside of the testing mode. We have no errors in our output yet. And then let's walk to this detector. We'll see the notification comes up and now I'm gonna click yes. Now there are no errors. However, I do wanna test this out. So to test it out, I'm just gonna make some tools. I'm just gonna click the add button, followed by tool. And then I'm just gonna name these tools cookies. And then I'm gonna duplicate them all so I can have as many as I want. I'm gonna click play. And now you'll see, once we load into studio, our inventory is going to be full of cookies. And now we're going to go to the bin. It's going to ask us, would you like to clear your inventory? We click yes, and all the cookies disappear. If you have any issues or need any help with anything, feel free to go to the forms down below and make a sport on scripting sport and tell us what is going on. There's a link in the description down below and it'll help you making an account and doing all of that stuff. So that's all for me. Bye bye and thank you for tuning in.